Yeah, I am with Kids Talk Radio. I am the kid unit of the operation that we have. And I will be asking you questions related to gang violence and how it connects to your experience. Um, for any reason, if you would like not to add, not to answer, just let me know. Okay. That would be fine. Um, I went to Wilson High School. I graduated in June in Long Beach. Um, I'm 18 years old, so I've I'm connecting to the story and I, I feel so sad, so it's really hard to hear it. I know you've uh, spoke to Wilson. I We've also had Holocaust survivors when I was there that went and spoke. And um, I knew Melody Ross, which, would, which was a student, a junior this year who passed away, shot by uh, two local gang members. And um, Hearing your story and hearing that you've dealt with loss, how do you, what do you have to say to the students who are dealing with the loss of their friend over something so unfair? Well, first of all, I can assure you that there is tremendous anger uh, because I know that in our cases also there was ang terrible anger. Unfortunately, we couldn't do anything about it. You, in the schools, you can do something about it. Uh, you, first of all, <coughs> I don't know whether the child who shot this person was caught, was punished. He, he, what has to be made an example to the others that, that this is the wrong thing to do. Mm -hmm. And the example has to be made in such a way that the rest of the kids understand that this is not acceptable in the school. And sometimes the schools are not uh, really very fair about these things. I know there were some schools where there were murders and, and the punishment uh, was not uh, correct and, and was not teaching anything. Mm -hmm. The punishment must teach the rest of the kids uh, what does it mean to kill another person? But, you know, maybe it's a little too late at that time. The, the teaching has to, be st has to start really at home, which is not happening in Long Beach. I know that many of the parents are gang members, so they don't get the, this kind of education at home. And that's why the school must be even more vigilant and even more um, has to have more programs teaching the children tolerance and understanding and, and to communicate with each other. That was Erin Gruer's success that she finally taught them to speak to each other, to ask each other the questions in in the in the stories that they were writing. They were asking each other the, the questions. What, what do you do at home? What kind of home you live in? How safe are you at home? How safe are you on the street? And when they find out that they, they are in the same boat, they have this, the same backgrounds and, and the same problems, they start communicating with each other. And once they started to communicate with, with each other, the whole situation changed. Now, um, being from Latina origin, I'm Mexican-American. I do have more of a connection with gang violence and because I have friends and family members who were lost through gang violence. And I definitely agree with you that you commu communication is key. I have um, two friends who went into gangs and um, that a year later were killed, you know, not even. And so for my family who had to cope with it, for my friends who had to cope with it, um, her parents, her parents are, um, you know, got to meet the, the murder. They, they had a face off yes. and I, I heard you mention it before. What is that like to m meet your the person who experimented on your sister, what is that? 
Well, you know, actually I was invited to Berlin a few years ago uh, to a group that calls itself One by One. Mm -hmm. and they have this idea that you change the world uh, one person at a time. And uh, what they do, they meet uh, of, of, of all places in Wanze where the final solution was actually created. And um, they spend a whole week together. These are survivors, Holocaust survivors, and children of Holocaust survivors, and ex-Nazis, and children of ex-Nazis. And they spend a whole week together telling about their stories and talking about what it is like today and what, what what should they have done at the time? Mm -hmm. And I, I think that these meetings are very useful. And I think that maybe in places like Long Beach, the community should have these kind of meetings with blacks and, and, and uh, Hispanics and uh, mm -hmm. uh, all kinds of Asian groups there. And, and get to know each other and, and get to speak to each other and explain why they hate each other. Like the Nazis are telling us what they felt at the time, why did they want the Jews to be killed. And we explained to them, you know, who we are and, and how wrong they were. Mm -hmm. and, so it's an it's an amazing uh, amazing uh, event. I can only tell you that when I came back from that meeting, I couldn't help thinking, what would I have done if I would have been a, a German, uh, born in Germany when Hitler, you know, was promising this one thousand year of of, of uh, glory. Yeah. So th th this is what's necessary. It's necessary to talk to each other and to understand that we are all human beings. We all want the same thing. Basically, all human beings really want the same thing. They, they want to have a nice family. They want to have a good home. They want to have enough food. Those are the basics that every human being wants. And if we get to know each other and we realize that uh, there's no reason why, there's just plain no reason why we should hate each other. Right. It's, it's total insanity. Mm -hmm. I'd like you to cut right there. <laughs> you got oh my God, it's such a blessing to meet you. <laughs> Multiple.